Hi, my name is Jeff and I've been a guitarist for over 20 years. Now I may not be the world's greatest guitarist of all time, but I am probably one of the biggest guitar nerds of all time. I love guitar gear. I love guitars. So I wanted to put together a definitive list of the five must have guitar pedals for any guitarist who's building their collection of effects, new, old, pro, whatever. And I want to give you an idea though also about my obsession with gear, just so you get a sense of where I'm coming from. I'm the type of person that like on my lunch break, I'm sneaking off to Guitar Center. I'm sneaking off to all the boutique guitar shops in New York City here uh, so that I can play with all the new stuff that's coming out. I can look at old vintage stuff. I can try everything. I've got the, the, the product lines for all the major manufacturers basically memorized at this point. I'm watching YouTube videos and reviews and demos nonstop, probably like you are. And I buy gear and I use it at home. I use it on stage. I record just at home with it. And my brother's also a big gearhead too. It's like all we talk about. It's probably the main thing that keeps us bonded together. It's like our, our favorite thing to discuss. So hopefully you get a sense now that I am someone who has done my homework. For this list, I tried to keep pedals uh, in the $100 range, um, but I even have something on here that is $49. So there is a little bit of something here for everyone. And I will put links to um, everything in the description below, links to videos where you can learn more about these, or if you want to buy them, that's down there too. I have strived to suggest pedals that are super easy to use, that um, sound amazing, duh, and uh, that have stood the test of time. Many of these pedals you would find on um, the boards of major touring uh acts rock acts on their professional pedal boards and if you don't own any of these pedals or don't own any pedals then this is a great video to watch and i'll talk about the order i think you should buy these um, to be better for you as a guitarist who's accumulating stuff but then also at the end i'll talk about the order i would connect them um, so you have a sense of uh, uh, suggested uh, signal paths let me add that now is probably one of the best times to buy guitar effects well it's really simple there's a ton of options right now um, the quality is an all-time high and prices are really cheap overall I, I wish it had been like this when I first started playing guitar and getting into gear because um, believe me over the years I've bought some serious garbage uh, before you could look everything up on YouTube and on the internet and research oh before I get started though if you like this video please subscribe it would mean a lot to me it's uh, <clears throat> your comments and the subscriptions that people uh, make that sort of keep me inspired to keep making these videos so anyways number one blah, number one is the tube screamer this is a famous overdrive pedal and really with good reason this has managed to be in constant use uh by professional guitarists for decades uh everyone from a weekend warrior who's playing bar gigs to stevie ray vaughn has used a tube screamer to help define their sound. The tube screamer um, is now available in, in also a mini version. So there's the classic and there's the mini. The mini is less expensive. Um, and if you are trying to fit it onto, you're trying to save space, you want a little mini micro pedal board with like just a bunch of little pedals, that's a great option. But note that if you do buy the mini, uh, it does not take batteries. So you will need an external power supply or um, an AC adapter. If size isn't a concern, then I would suggest buying just the regular classic. Um, I like having pedals that are, can take a battery. So sometimes I take them off and I go just bring one pedal over to a friend's house or something. Um, and I also think the housing's a little bit more robust on the full size. So why start with the Tube Screamer as your first pedal? Overdrive, it's just gonna make you feel like a rock star, right? I mean, sure, your amp probably has some sort of like overdrive and distortion sounds, but unless you, you know, have a really nice amp, it's probably leaving a lot to be desired. And if you're just a beginner, someone who's just starting out and you have like a solid state little practice amp, um, you know, it's probably not sounding great. But uh, Tube Screamer will really make your sound come alive in a very pleasant way. Um, it has a nice sort of mid-range hump that allows uh, your guitar to really cut through the mix. So if you're playing with drums or basses or another guitarist, it helps you sort of separate and stand out. And there's also something really satisfying, frankly, about like, you got that that pedal on the floor and you boom you stomp on it with your foot and your guitar just goes from like a clean sound to just like Rah! it's like screaming and um the opposite of like just walking over and like pushing a little button on your amp or turning the 
it just doesn't have the same level of oomph. If you do have a nice amp uh, and it does get a decent high gain sound, uh, Tube Screamer is still great for the reasons I said before about how it pumps the, the mid range. Um, and it can also make just your your driven sound just even that much more robust. If you're strictly looking to play punk or metal, um, I have some runner up options uh, as well, and I'll get to those in a second. But if you play like a mix of rock, blues, metal, um, or you're still sort of experimenting and uh, try to figure out what your, your sound is, um, then get the Tube Screamer. Just trust me on that. Like you're going to get tons of years out of, of use out of that, especially if you're in a cover band, you need to do a bunch of different stuff. Runner up options. Runner up. So my runner ups. Uh, the Boss DS1. Uh, if you want like an edgier high gain sound, then that pedal uh, is it's going to do the trick. Uh, it holds also the distinction of being the lowest priced pedal on my list. The other really cool thing about the DS1 is if you want to nerd out and you want to like modify a pedal, um, one, it's cheap. So if you screw up, who cares? But you take out the solder gun, there's tons of schematics online. You can uh, do things and there's a lot of cool fun stuff to do there. Another runner up would be the Full Tone OCD. If uh, this is a, a more aggressive sounding distortion with tons of gain on tap, um, so if you want to get uh, heavy and chunky, the OCD will not let you down. It's really great because it can go from just being a mild boost to just like ripping your face off like ah! Man, it's a really fun pedal. Uh, number two pedal is the Boss DD7 Delay. So, all right, you got a Tube Screamer, your guitar is going from quiet to loud and clean and distorted, all with like sort of the stomp your foot. And so let's now expand that sound in a way that sort of only Delay can sort of do that. So Delay is really adds sort of a unique character to your sound. You know, it's something that says like, it's country music, it's psychedelic, it's epic, it's dreamy. It's sort of all about, it can be ambient. It's all really how you set your controls. Delay also happens to be um, one of these effects that guitarists are just the, just really picky about. Some people want a ton of controls, some people want it really simple, some people want tap tempo, some people could care less about that. And there's just this huge argument over what's better digital or analog delay that I think people will, will be arguing about until probably the end of time. So in keeping with just the general concept of the list between price and ease of use um, and finding something that was respected enough that no one was going to like scoff if you showed up at a gig with it. Um, so I thought, you know, okay, really long and hard, like what's, what am I going to suggest for this? And the Boss DD7 I felt like covered all those bases and was my ultimate winner. The Boss DD7 is, is small, it's easy to use, it contains a lot of options because it's digital that allow you to experiment. Um, with what type of delay you like. So if you want an analog sounding delay, there's a setting for that. If you want a clean digital clean digital delay, there's a setting for that. If you want a crazy reverse delay, there's a setting for that. So chances are if you're watching this video, you've sort of yet to decide where you fall on the analog versus digital argument or whatever. This is a good way for you to hear a bunch of different types of delays and determine what appeals most to you and what you're really looking for. In the world of analog delays, um, the MXR Carbon Copy is really a gold standard in delay pedals. This shows up everywhere. People love this. Uh, but I decided to keep this as a runner-up because um, if you're just learning about pedals, um, then uh, you may want something that has a few more controls, some more options. Uh, and the Carbon Copy is just three knobs. It's very simple. Um, it has a wonderful classic warm analog tone, but if you are just still figuring out what you're looking for, um, you may plug it in and the last thing I want is for you to go like, you know, like, oh, this is cool, but I wish I had more stuff to play with. Um, so that's why I went with the Digital Boss DD7. Uh, another analog delay though, if you are really looking to try to figure that out, is there's a Boss uh, Wazacraft analog delay. Um, so I would also recommend checking that out if you want a simple to use, high quality analog delay. So now the next big question is why delay and not a reverb pedal? Well, this is, my thinking was that most guitar amps have reverb. Um, either, you know, a practice amp has got some digital delay, a digital reverb in it, or um, a high-end uh, amp with a spring reverb in it. So I thought I was going to treat that as sort of a free effect um, that you already have. But if you don't have an amp with reverb, or if you just really want a, a higher quality, more very, uh, reverb with a lot of options, then I'm going to recommend the um, TC Electronics Hall of Fame. This is a reverb that has um, a lot of 
controls so that they're, they're simple to use controls, but so that you can sculpt the sound that you want. And also it has this really cool feature called tone print where you can um, use your phone and it'll beam a signal <laughs> through your guitar pickup into the pedal and change the tone there. So these are my runner up suggestions. I'll summarize this. The MXR carbon copy for an analog delay. The Boss DM-2W delay was a craft. That's another analog delay. Um, the TC Electronic Hall of Fame Reverb uh, with tone print. Those would be the runner-ups if you don't want the Boss DD7. Number three. Three. Dunlop Cry Baby Mini Wah. You gotta have a wah pedal. And I think that um, this is, it's really hard to beat this. If you don't know what a wah is, it is a pedal you control with your foot, which is like a notched EQ, and that um, creates that, just when you move your foot on it, it creates that standard waka 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 sound that you've heard anyway from Jimi Hendrix, um, Steve Ray Vaughan, funk music, Metallica, boom chicka wow wow, porno soundtracks that we all like to uh, make fun of. A wah lends an expressive quality to your playing in a way that really nothing else does that allows you to sort of sculpt your tone in real time, make it a little bit more vocal. A lot of artists also will take the foot controller and just sort of park it in one position. Uh, sometimes people call that a cocked wah sound and that gives you ability to pick a certain frequency and let it really punch through, cut through mix. So I think the Dunlop Mini wah is probably the best wah you can buy right now. It's just that simple. I would just get that. If you want a runner up, uh, the Dunlop Buddy Guy Signature Wah. I actually own this. I love it. It's an expensive Wah, um, but I felt like I needed to give you some other options. Like I said, I have it. I love it. Uh, also, the Vox V847. So Vox is the other name, big, other big name in Wahs. The Vox generally has a slightly different tone. Some people call it bright and edgy, but honestly, for the same cost as what you're going to spend for the Vox, maybe even less. Um, I would just buy the Dunlop Mini. It's, the Dunlop's got three tone options. It's really convenient in size. The Dunlop Mini Wah is a game changer. Uh, that, just, just buy that. Just, just buy that. Number four. Four. The MXR Phase 95. So right now I've covered a lot of the standard effects. So it's time to get weird and talk about mod mod modulation. Uh, modulation effects are a category of pedals that adjust the way your, um, your sound is that sort of causes a listener to perceive sort of an additional dimension or depth, uh, sort of, people sort of describe it as movement. This just is like flangers, phasers, chorus effects, a univibe, um, pitch vibrato, tremolo, uh, rotary speaker effects, uh, stuff like a Leslie are often sort of included in modulation. I love modulation pedals. My first pedal ever was a chorus pedal. Um, which, which I loved opening Christmas morning all those years ago. Thank you, Mom. But uh, Chorus was maybe not the best place to start with a pedal collection. Um, and that's just why I say get a Tube Screamer first. Right now, I'm currently obsessed with my Moog Flanger, but I would say a, a Phaser is probably the best place to start with modulation effects. Phasers are wild enough to sound sort of weird and crazy, but also not so weird and crazy that you lose sort of all musical quality of what you're doing. Phasers also work really well with gain pedals and can be used in sort of everything from like a psychedelic rock sound um, to metal, um, pop music, you know, you hear it all over the place. The MXR Phase 95 is a brand new mini pedal, um, and I say this is the one to own. For those not aware of the whole obsession guitarists have with phasers, I'll just try to sum this up briefly. There are basically two phasers that everyone feels are the best. The MXR Phase 45 and the MXR Phase 90. But there were two versions of the Phase 45 and the Phase 90 made previously. The, uh, the older vintage units had a script logo and modern versions had like a block logo. People get really crazy about like what sounds better. Um, so this new Phase 95, it lets you toggle between having a Phase 45 in block and script and a phase 95 in block and script. So you get like four pedals in one just by the way you push the buttons. So thank you, I don't know why this didn't happen sooner. It's super affordable, um, especially when you consider that you're getting those four best-selling pedals in one. If you bought them all separately, you'd spend way more money. So just get the phase 95 mini, it's awesome. Only thing to know is it doesn't take batteries, so you will need an external AC power adapter. Uh, or, or power supply on your pedal board. I don't think this is a deal breaker. Like I said, you get a lot of versatility from just one pedal. 
Um, so yeah, runner up options. I'm gonna say the full tone Deja vibe. If you know that you are gonna be playing a lot of Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, Robin Trower, um, uh, maybe some David Gilmore, then like this is that mystery pedal that gives everything that sort of uh, golden, swirly, throbbing, like amazing tone. Um, it's a secret ingredient to like Hendrix at Woodstock when he does the Star Spangled Banner. For the full tone Deja Vibe, there's also been four versions over time. There was the original Deja Vibe, there was the Deja Vibe Mini, the Deja Vibe V2, and the and now the V3. Um, and the V2 and V3 include a foot controller for speed, which is really handy. But as a result, you can sometimes find these used um, for a little bit less money. So check that out. Uh, the Boss CE2 W Wazacraft Chorus. Um, if you know you're going to be playing a lot of Police and Nirvana covers, then I would go with that chorus pedal. Uh, it's a new release. Um, look for that if you if you don't want a phaser and you want a chorus specifically. Number five. Five. The Ditto Looper. Why a looper for your fifth pedal? Well, the Boss DD7 pedal that I mentioned before has a basic looper functionality included. Um, so now you can decide at this point if you want to dedicate yourself to a looper full time. If you want something bare bones, the Ditto Looper is the obvious choice. If you want something that's a little more robust for a live performance, I'll, I'll talk about those in just a second. Uh, the Ditto Looper is about as basic as it's going to get. It's one knob. It's uh, super easy to use, super popular. It's probably the best selling looper of all time. Um, it's really, it's not that expensive. Um, it does not have any sort of drum sounds. It does not have a built-in metronome. Um, honestly, my feeling is like if you want to record and play with a, a fake drummer, or you're probably going to record into your computer if you want to make a song. You can use like GarageBand or something on a Mac. So um, if you want to do that type of thing, you're probably going to do it in your computer. You're probably not going to do it with a looper. Uh, to me, having a looper is about something that's spontaneous, organic, fun. Now, of course, as you bought this last, you have all these other cool pedals, overdrives, phasers, and you get to play with all those in your solo over top of the loop that you made. Um, and that's really fun, right? That's like why we play guitar, to have fun. The ditto will mean that you do need to plug it into a power supply or AC adapter. It does not accept batteries, so keep that in mind. Uh, the AC adapter is also sold separately, so there's something to keep in mind. A runner-up option. The Digitech Trio. So this this is a very interesting pedal. Um, you record a loop and it learns that loop, and then adds a drummer and a bassist to play along with you, uh, so that you're playing like in a trio in a band. It's a really neat pedal. Check out some videos. Um, the TC Electronics Ditto X4. It'd be a more professional pedal if you wanted to play a lot of looping live and do something like that. Wait a second. What if you don't want a standalone looper? Perhaps the freeze function on the on the Boss DD7 delay is all the looper you need. Maybe your friend has it, you borrowed a looper, and you're just like, I hate this, it's not for me. Um, then I'm going to suggest you pick up a compressor. Compressors limit the dynamic range of your guitar signal. So you have super loud, super quiet. It's going to keep this from clipping. It's going to bring the soft parts up and this down a little bit. And it's going to help even out the volume um, with any sort of like fast picking that you're doing. Compressors are used everywhere. They're in country music for really fast chicken picking. Uh, it's in metal, really fast, like shredding metal solos. The Exotic Effects SP Compressor would be my recommended compressor. This is a great entry into the world of compressors if you don't know anything about them. It offers super simple controls. It has a great, trans a great transparent sound. The SP compressor also has a lot of extra gain on tap, so you can you can actually use it as a bit of a boost and blend it back in with your original signal. Um, so it's actually a great pedal to kick on, like for a solo. Now, I can't talk about guitars and compressors without talking about the MXR Dyna Comp. Um, this is perhaps the easiest compressor of all time. It has two controls. Um, it's a huge seller for years. Ex the Exotic has a similar sound and a bit more flexibility, which is why I recommended that. Um, the Dynacomp though, like I said, it's been used for years, but it does color your sound a little bit. A lot of people still choose this because they like the bit of a tone that it gives. The, the Dynacomp is true bypass, so when you turn it off, it doesn't affect your sound. So, um, yay. At less than $100, the Dynacomp is uh, still like a really, it's a killer pedal. I'm, you know, check it out if you're trying to say you don't want to spend for the exotic. So why no tuner in this list? And I know someone's going to ask that. Well, like, hey, a tuner is going to be super helpful. And yeah, obviously. But 
if you're like a new to learn to play guitar, one, you should learn to tune your guitar manually. I, I'm going to be the guy, I'm going to say that, right? But also, we live in the age of like smartphones. You can get an app to tune. I use this all the time. Um, so if you're going to run out and you're going to go to some friend's house and you got to tune your guitar, pull out an app or you're playing at home. If you're like going to play gigs all the time, sure, buy a tuner, buy the um, the Boss, uh, what is it, the, the TU-3 tuner. That's super popular it's on like every pedal board everywhere. Um, get that if you want a standalone tuner. But otherwise, I say, you know, get an app for your phone, learn to tune by ear, and don't buy a tuner until you really need it. Um, save your money and buy all the other cool stuff. Buy the phaser, buy, you know, um, me buy a chorus or buy, a, buy the compressor and the looper, right? Okay. Now is that big moment where I'm going to talk about how to put the pedals uh, in order, how I would connect them. So up until now, I've been talking about like the order I would buy them. But now I'm going to talk about how I would suggest that you connect them. So, um, all right, so here we go. Option number one, guitar, Dunlop Mini Wah, the Tube Screamer, the Phase 90, uh, Phase 95, sorry, uh, the get your delay in there, and then the looper, and then your amp. Option two, try placing the wah uh, after the Tube Screamer and then before the Tube Screamer. Figure out what sound you like more. Both are correct. Um, it's totally up to you. I, I can actually have a video about, about this, so I'll link to that. And option three, try putting your delay and phaser um, after the looper. And that way those effects are sort of being added on top of the loop instead of being recorded in the loop. And you may like just that setup more. Um, or maybe if you have an effects loop on your amp, you might put them there instead. So are these the five best effects pedals? Leave a comment. Tell me, what do you think? Share your thoughts. Did I leave something out? Let me know. Uh, yeah, I want to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more content. Um, you can see I do guitar demos and videos like this one. Um, and you can follow along as I learn how to play the sitar. That's been a really crazy adventure for me. Um, thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. Bye. One, two, three. Um, 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 uh, um, 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 <clears throat> uh, and it sounds like, it sounds like that.